Welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing another Q&A. The last time I did one of these was over six months ago. So I threw out a post in my community tab and I asked people to give me questions. You guys did give me questions. So I'm gonna hop in here and answer a few of them. The last time around that I did one of these Q&As, it was 40 minutes long and I answered like 50 questions. This time around, I am not going to be answering 40 minutes long worth of questions, and so a lot of your questions probably won't get answered. But I want to make the Q&As more of a maybe, I don't know, monthly, bi-monthly thing, and because of that, I'm not going to answer a ton of questions all at once, and rather, I just went through and found the ones I liked the most, and I'll be answering those. So if your question didn't get answered, it's not the end of the world, and I'll probably be doing more of these in the future. But rather than sit here and continue talking about not questions you asked me, I'll pull up the first question. And on that note, our first question comes from David, who asks, if you had a team of devs, would you do a JoJo game with all the ideas and concepts you've shared within your complaint videos? Because I feel like you would be a great game owner. And honestly, David, when it comes down to it, I don't have any plans to make any sort of games on Roblox. I just don't have it in me. As it is right now, I spend all of my time throughout the week working on either Roblox videos or Battlefield videos or I'm streaming. That's what I spend my time doing. The small amount of time that I don't spend doing that, I am having my leisure time, whether it be playing a single player game I don't normally get to play, or playing some games with friends. And a lot of the time, even during that leisure time, I'm still recording for potential videos. So in essence, I'm kind of still on the clock at times. The takeaway is I work a lot. And because of that, I don't think I would even have time to make a game. On top of that, I don't have any clue how to code either. So if I was the owner of a game, I would be really, really unhelpful. The best I could ever get would be, I guess, creative director and sit in the back and tell people things. But even then, I don't know. I feel like getting your game popular on Roblox is so much RNG anyway. And sure, I could have my audience play it, but even still, I think it would take a lot of work and I just don't have the time for it. So as it stands, I don't have any plans to do this. Moving on, Jazzy asks, do you have any thoughts on Stone Free literally being an okay stand like Red Hot Chili Peppers? And this is actually something that I've thought a lot about, and it's something that's changed in my mindset as of the recent few, I guess, months at this point. When Red Hot Chili Peppers came out, you can go back and watch me on record saying that I thought it was perfectly fine that Red Hot Chili Peppers was an okay stand. And that mindset, I can't stand behind anymore. Frankly, I don't see the point of them adding stands that nobody wants to use. Red Hot Chili Peppers is a stand that barely anyone, if anyone, is ever using. There's a few people that are really good at the game that use it for lols, but at the end of the day, that stand is just kind of trash. And I really don't know why they would add trash stands. Maybe I'm taking someone's question from later. Uh, it's not on my list of questions here anyway, but I have said it on record on one of my streams before that I think that YBA could seriously benefit from potentially going the route of non-canon stands, kind of like AUT does. Things like Shadow of the World Requiem and Star Platinum Requiem and AUT are both good stands that aren't canon that people use. Those are things that were added to that game or were in the game before, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. But the point being, they're stands people actually want to use. Right now, YBA has added a lot of the stands from the anime and the manga that people would want to use. And what's left, they have to get really creative in order to make them want to be used by players. And if they took the route of non-canon stands, then they could have more flexibility to make things that people would actually want to use. People have been clamoring for Crazy Diamond Requiem for ages, and while I have no idea what a moveset would be for that, it's a stand that if added, people might actually want to use. If they add Stone Free and it's just kind of boring or uninspired, or really just isn't that good, then it's not gonna matter if they added it, because two weeks later, no one's gonna be using it anymore. So at the end of the day, I don't really care for stands that are just boring. I don't care what the stand is, as long as it's fun to play. And Red Hot Chili Peppers wasn't, and I'm hoping Stone Free will be. Bruddy Loaf asks, thoughts on the possible addition of a stand trading system? Also, congratulations, I love your vids and streams. Stand trading is something that I used to be against, but in hindsight, I don't have any real clue why. 
I don't think there's any negatives to stand trading. I just can't think of any. I think people just are resistant to change and they don't want to see it. We already have stand skins in the game, something I didn't want and to be honest with you, I still wish weren't added. But I accept those being in the game, and because they're there, it makes a lot of sense for stand trading to exist. Stand trading, at the end of the day, even if you don't think you're gonna use it, I don't think it really hurts anyone, so I'm not sure how it matters. I've seen some arguments that it'll encourage more hackers to go into SBR and sell things like the World Over Heaven, but if we're being honest, there are hackers all over Steel Ball Run anyway, so I don't think stand trading is going to change any of that. It'd be great if they could get their anti-cheat to actually catch these people, but that's not happening and we're just gonna have to deal with it. So stand trading doesn't really matter to me. I probably won't use it. I'm sure people will and power to them. Next question is from Salty Paper Plate who asks, if there was a JoJo game that had every stand be broken good or vice versa, would that be a good thing? Every stand is still unique, but in the same realm of good or bad. And this is a question that's kind of hard to answer. And I guess the parallel I would pull is probably from a game that none of you have played because you're too young. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was always regarded as a game that was notoriously unbalanced but still really fun to play. And a lot of the time, I don't necessarily think that unbalanced means bad, but when it comes to fighting games, that's usually true. If you have one character that's just outright better than everything else, then it's rough. YBA, I think, is one of those games that actually does a surprisingly good job of balancing their stands. I think YBA gets a bad rap because of meta stuff and time stop, and those things are a problem. But if you take a good player and give them something like Beach Boy, and you put them up against a trash can that's using the World Over Heaven or Star Platinum the World, the Beach Boy player is gonna win almost 100% of the time. But I'm not really answering your question. I guess the answer would be, I always think there has to be some sort of imbalance in games, or they're not gonna be fun. If everything is perfectly balanced to a complete T, then it's hard to make everything unique, albeit basically impossible. So what I would tell you is the ideal is impossible and I don't think the question can be answered because if everything was both unique and balanced, that would be a great game, but striving for that is an impossibility. That just can't be done. The next question is from Sweet Nail Clippings. What a great name, quality. And that question is, do you plan to make content surrounding other video games you haven't covered on this channel yet, be it Roblox games or completely different ones like Halo Infinite or other fighting RPG slash FPS games? Or is it going to be JoJo Roblox content and Battlefield stuff for now? Maybe a bit of Tarkov? I don't know about that one, Chief. Final question, what do you think about the idea of doing 2v2 in SBR bingos? Now, this is a few questions, so you kind of cheated, but I'll answer the two that are here regardless. Currently, this channel is just going to be Roblox games, the channel you're watching right now. I do have a second channel called Eclipse FPS. I'll link it in the description if you wanna go watch it. And on that channel, I play Battlefield and that's about it. But that channel will probably have other stuff that isn't Battlefield because it's just kind of my second channel. The FPS title is mostly a formality. I'll play anything that I really wanna play over there. Right now, it's just Battlefield's what I wanna play. So that's what's on there. But on this channel, it's Roblox Jojo. And to not try to get into too many of the specifics of it and bore you, the main reason for that is just the matter of the YouTube algorithm and really trying to keep my core audience watching my channel. What some of you probably don't know, or what most of you don't know, is that there was a point where I was uploading two Battlefield videos and three YBA videos a week. That's what I do right now, just split across two separate channels. When I started doing that, my Roblox videos started taking hits. The viewership started going down and it just didn't look good. Now, whether that was a fluke or not, it's a risk that I don't really wanna take. That's the reason that there is a second channel to begin with and why the Battlefield stuff isn't posted on this channel at all. So in essence, I can't really branch out on this channel at the risk of losing my current audience to the YouTube algorithm. If it stops promoting my stuff to my own subscribers, they're not gonna see it. And that's an issue for me, obviously. As for the idea of doing 2v2s and SBR bingos, I don't know. When it comes to playing 2v2s and SBR, I need to actually play with other people to do that, and that involves freeing up schedules on both ends, and it just gets complicated, and a lot of the time, I just can't be bothered. I also feel bad whenever I do it because I feel like I'm extorting my friends for views to a sense. Maybe I shouldn't feel bad, but I do. 
Whenever I ask someone to come play at 2v2s with me for breaking 2v2s, for example, I almost feel like I'm standing to gain and they're not, and then I feel bad about it. I never want to feel like I'm using my friends for money, and so I just don't do things that I probably could. It's self-conscious and dumb, but it's just the way it is. The next question comes from Cesaro End, who says, Thoughts on a map rework? Second map for more content? We've had the same map since release, and it's getting kind of stale. I'd like to see a new map slash second map for like, I don't know, fourth to sixth rebirths, then maybe add like a rebirth reward system. Like maybe on six you get a lucky arrow. Let me know your thoughts. Well, Cesaro, I'm gonna be honest, I don't care. When it comes to maps, I don't play on them anymore. A lot of you know this, or should know it, but when I go on to a game of YBA, I do not go anywhere near main game. Everyone knows who I am in main game, and the second I get recognized, I get mobbed with people and either die or get surrounded and people are asking for screenshots and stuff, and generally, I just can't play. So because of that, I don't play main game. So at the end of the day, an extra map would mean all but nothing to me. It's a shame, because main game used to be the majority of what I played, but now I barely touch it at all. As for extra prestiges, which is I'm assuming what you're talking about with the rebirths concept, I am also afraid of that. YBA is a game with barely any stand storage as it is, and if they added extra prestiges that had necessary rewards at the end of them, and I had to go through all of the levels again on 18 different accounts, that would be horrible. I can't even imagine trying to do that. If it was just optional rewards and stuff that didn't mean anything, then I wouldn't be too bothered if it was like a lucky hour reward or something like you said. But if it was necessary, like levels, that would be a nightmare. So honestly, while it would be cool to see a second map, it wouldn't really affect me at all. The next question comes from Nameless Weeb, who asks two questions. SCR review when? And do you ever get bored of making YBA content? The SCR review when? We already know the answer to that. It's coming 2030. I always say that. Wait till 2030. It'll be here. I promise. As for getting bored of making YBA content, uh, I don't know. That's a hard question to answer. One of the big things that's really helped me recently, which I've talked about on streams a few times, is that I really just stopped playing Roblox JoJo as a whole when I'm not recording. If I'm not recording something, I'm usually not playing. The odds of running into me in any of the ranked modes is really low because I don't play that many games. It's rare to see me playing anymore, which is about the polar opposite of what it was before. I used to play tons and tons and tons of hours, and I guess to a degree I still do, it's just I'm recording and doing something rather than just playing. And that kind of mindset stops me from going through the whole scenario of, oh my god, I can't do this anymore, I'm gonna throw myself out the window. And don't get me wrong, I have been there a few times, but it's never been so bad that I couldn't get my work done, and I don't think it really ever will be. I'm really, really, really glad that AUT got released and the developers were committed to fixing it because that game kind of saved me when it came to having to do everything about YBA. When AUT released and it was in the state it was, I was honestly kind of depressed. Well, depressed is a wrong word. I don't suffer from depression. But I was upset about the state that AUT was released in because I was kind of holding out hope that it would be another game that I could do content on and finally get away from YBA at least some of the time. And eventually, it did grow into that, and I'm glad it did. I mean, the background footage you're looking at right now is just me hopping into some AUT 1v1s and playing. The next question comes from Michael, who asks, What's your take on YBA's current meta, stands, specs, etc? And I'm gonna be honest with you, Michael, I'm gonna break a whole lot of people's hearts here, but I'm actually pretty happy with the state of YBA's meta right now. I don't have a huge problem with boxing being the only spec people can use, and that's mainly because, well, there's no free spec storage still, so if other specs were viable, I would constantly have to be resetting my spec all the time. On top of that, boxing is one of the easiest specs to use, with only two real moves that you need to use, no charging, nothing, it just makes playing the game pretty easy. And the state of the meta really doesn't feel that bad. I think KCR and SCR are probably the biggest problems right now, at least in my opinion, and those stands are both in incredibly annoying and pretty serious problems, but I've accepted at this point that those things probably won't ever get fixed, or if they do, it'll take months and months and months. So the meta has been in way worse places. It got a whole lot better, honestly, when they made the time stop take longer to come out. I initially thought that change was worthless, but it has actually saved me 
a lot of pain and suffering. So overall, while people love to complain about the meta and say it's a nightmare, I'm kind of happy with where it is. Jeremy Jim asks, is there any other Roblox game you genuinely enjoyed and played for more than around an hour intentionally other than Roblox JoJo games? Jeremy, uh, I don't play too many Roblox games and the extent of me playing Roblox in my free time is when my friends get on and want to play some stupid game that we're going to jump in for an hour. So to answer your question, Recently, not really. I can tell you that a few nights ago, I played Randomizer with my friends, and that was a lot of fun. And I've played a whole assortment of just bad games, which are fun to play for a little bit. But outside of that, I can't really think of anything that I've dedicated a whole lot of time to. I guess Zeppelin Wars is a pretty good one that we played for a pretty sizable amount of time. So to answer your question, not really, but sort of. Nothing I could really make videos on, if that's kind of an underlying question. Star Platinum Zawardo asks, Eclipse, what do you think about putting out the fire effect just dashing? I don't like it because it makes Magician's Reds, Pyrokinesis, make the fire effect longer, 1 to 5, useless. And this question obviously came from someone who wasn't around when this broke. And the short answer is, fire being able to put out by dashes is extremely necessary. A few months ago, there was a point where the fire effects couldn't be put out by dashing. And when that accidental change was in effect, Magician's Red was unstoppable. I don't think people really realize just how long the fire actually lasts when you're not able to put the fire out through dashing, and how easy it is for things like Magician's Red to set you on fire. If you get clipped by any of their moves, you're burning for like 10 seconds. So to answer the question, really good, and if it changes, we're all in a lot of trouble. Getting close to the end here, two questions left. The next one comes from Line. Great name. Do you plan on playing and making videos on other fighting games in Roblox or outside? You're pretty good at showcasing stuff and give useful information like tactics, point out weaknesses, and that kind of stuff. And this is kind of the same as a question I already answered, but I'll answer it on its own just cuz. When it comes down to it, here's the deal. The current basis of this channel is Roblox anime fighting games. Remember those three terms. The reason you need to remember those three terms is because I don't really play Roblox games. I don't really play anime games, and honestly, I don't really play fighting games. All three of those genres are games that I'm not super heavily invested into. The biggest extent of my experience in Roblox anime fighting games is when this channel started, or I guess really a little bit less than a year before this channel started. Before that, the most experience that I had even close to the genre was experience in Super Smash Bros. I used to play a good amount of Smash Ultimate, but I was always extremely mediocre. I was never good enough to get any halfway decent placings at tournaments, and I felt like I always hit a wall and I could never get anywhere. In essence, I just wasn't good. Outside of that, I've never played any sort of anime game outside of Roblox, and I don't really play too many Roblox games, or really any Roblox games, regularly. Because, well, I mean, I'm 21. Most of Roblox doesn't appeal to me. So when it comes down to it, the odds of me playing fighting games outside of Roblox, or other fighting games in Roblox, aren't super high because, well, I'm not really very good at them, and I've never been very invested in them. It's one of the reasons that a lot of the time I go on record saying that if I could just start doing Battlefield and not play Roblox anymore, I would. And most of that comes down from the fact that I've been playing shooters since I was like 10 years old, maybe longer. So I've been playing shooters for over 10 years. Roblox JoJo, maybe a year at max, or just fighting games, maybe six or seven years. That's probably generous. So the answer to the question at the end of the day Probably not. And finally, the last question for today is Kid Gamer asking, what's it like being able to, if only slightly, influence the meta in some games? And I think this is something that people give me too much credit for a lot of the time. There are a lot of people that send me messages that say things along the lines of, you need to stop making videos that address certain things because they get the game changed and I don't like it. That kind of mindset, I 100% understand. And I totally get where they're coming from, 
And not only that, but a lot of the time I empathize with them because I'm in the same position about other games. When I see YouTubers that are influential in other spaces and they're talking about games in the complete opposite way that I think that they should be going about, and then I know that developers are watching those videos and that they're taking notes and that the game could very well go in that direction, it just makes me feel kind of powerless. And I've been in that position many a times, and so I know how those people feel. But what I will tell those people is that behind the scenes, I'm as careful as I can to make sure that I'm not just upsetting the entire balance of the game in my bias favor. You can choose to believe me or not, and I know a lot of people will not, but I only ever send things to contacts that I have behind development if I think it's extremely necessary. Whether it be a game-breaking bug, or things needing to get fixed, or a serious balance issue that no one can deny. Outside of that, I very, very rarely send over anything that's just minor or a personal preference. When it comes to my external stuff and posting videos, it really is just up to the people making the games how they want to react to those. Obviously, there's a huge hive mind behind my videos that will just parrot everything I say without question and not accept the fact that I'm wrong sometimes. But if developers want to listen to things I put in videos or ignore things I put in videos, I think that's up to their jurisdiction, and blaming me for that is just, well, it's foolish. People are gonna hate me if they want to though, and there's not much I can really do about that. But I guess an answer to the question is, I do have influence, and I try to use my influence with what I think is in best interest to the community, and if it's not, then I expect the backlash. Anyways, that's the last question for today, and that's what's gonna wrap up the video. The recording for this took a little over a half hour. The editing will probably trim it down to like 25 minutes, and it's still probably longer than I expected it to be. But whatever, I'm not too worried. Anyways, that's all I got. So if you've got more questions, I'll have a post later. If you leave the questions in the comment section of this video, uh, I probably won't see them because I'll probably go through another community post. But if you want to leave your questions down there anyway, you can feel free to do so. And with all that, I'm done. So you can leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Don't if you didn't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you next time.